Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Verse 1 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 1. It's a popular story. A story that you know. Now there was a man, 1 Kings, 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim. And his name was Elkanah, son of Joram, the son of Eliu, the son of Toh, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. The name of the other, Benina. Benina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man, that's not what about, he used to go and, and the Bible says they would go and worship. Verse 5. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. Although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Verse 8. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? You know, same scenario. Loving husband, very caring, clearly expressing his love, but there was one issue that could, do, that could actually eclipsed all that love. You know, have you ever seen, I was thinking about this, if maybe, maybe you can give me your, if, do, I, do I have two young, two young people here? Yeah, come. I said two. Where's the, where's the second one? Good. Can you get can you get that cloth from my mother's here? I want you to hold it and hold it nicely, spreading it. Help 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 each other. Good. Yeah. Hold it this way. Yeah. This way. No, 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 it's good. Don't, don't open it. It will be difficult to hold. Just hold like this. Yeah, you can go up there. Yeah, spread it nicely. Stretch it. Yeah, that's it. You see this cloth? It's a very nice fleece, white in color. Have you discovered that if there was going to be a black dot or a stain on this cloth, our attention would go more on the dot <laughs> than, the th than the fact that this thing, there is a greater part that is actually white. <laughs> Am I helping someone to, to process what I'm trying to say? Why is our attention so drawn? No matter how the greater portion of this thing is white, the greater portion of this thing is actually beautiful. But because of that black dot, everyone's eyes will be on that black dot. And the black dot now occupies a greater space in our eyes than actually it deserves. How often is it that in life everything else is working 
Everything else is white and beautiful. But our eyes get so focused on the black dot of life. The one thing. It's white, but you can sit. You can give him a face, maybe God. Now, have you ever seen that in life you, you can have someone having a very successful career and uh, struggle to be married? I've seen this with some of our girls sometimes. Very successful in terms of her career. Blessed in every respect. But. And that but eclipses every other achievement in life. You can look in your, in a, in a, in your own life. You can have someone who is who has a great personality but very academically challenged. And because they that area where they were challenged of that area where they were challenged, everything else falls out of balance. Successful in life, but maybe divorced. Successful, great achievements, academically, but not employed. Struggling to get employed. You could think of area after area. One of the greatest thorns I have found in some parents, you can have a parent who are very good, They, they themselves have lived well, have done what they think they, they can do for kids, but the, the, the child turns out to be something else. You are, you, you, you are a wonderful advisor to other child, people's children, but yours go in another direction. Not that you have not done anything, you have done all you think you, you could do. What that tells you is that in life, certain conditions can be so loud. You can hear or see nothing else except them if you are not careful. Have you ever heard someone speak a statement like, nothing is working in my life? Nothing, Baba, nothing is working in my life. Now, don't listen to that statement and take it literal. Because the truth of the matter, their, their lungs are working, their feet are working, their eyes are working. They are, they, it means they are saying something. One aspect is not working. There is, check every time when someone says, nothing is working in my life. Check properly. There is one thing that is not working. That is frustrating them. And that thing Eclipses everything else. Nothing is working. Mm. Mamfud is always warns, especially women in marriage. When a woman sits and says, I've never enjoyed my marriage. Never, never enjoyed my marriage. And she's 25 years in marriage. Now, she always says, are you telling me that 25 years were all horror? Not day you, were, you, were, you, you, you guys were enjoying. Not one day. Not one. 
she's trying to say something. It's just how she say it. You know. Now, Naaman was a great warrior in the eyes of his master. He was a mighty man of valor. But was a leper. Maybe yours is not leprous. Question is, what is it? So for some, it's a limitation of a kind. That possibly is responsible for all the misery in your life or all the lack of progress in your life. Question is, what is it? So it takes. So this thing that I'm talking about, the battle of your life, is that big alligator that wants to be. If you are not careful, if you are not careful, it will swallow everything else that's working. You know, it will swallow everything else. So, what do you do when you identify such a challenge or something like that? Number one, understand the source of your value. Understand the source of your value. When you look at your life, the great question is, where do you derive your value from? Now, the great problem for most people is that we derive our value from what we do and what we achieve. Good as it may be, but the challenge is if then you are not achieving to your expectations or if you are challenged there. For example, if you were Let's say you are, you are someone is a student. Obviously, the, they are looking forward to one achievement that they must graduate, isn't it? Now, if they, if they are so challenged in that area of education that they even end up not graduating, that becomes something that can actually destroy them if they are only going to look at their life based on that. As much as that's important, but I'm saying if that's not put in proper perspective, it becomes a problem. These things become worse because in, in the world that we live, we suffer death by comparison. That's the that's unfortunate. We suffer death by comparison. You look at your what someone else has done and what you have not done or are, are failing to do and you conclude that I have become a failure. And yet in life, achievements and other things, they depend on a number of parameters. A lot of things, we are not the same. We don't even start life at the same level. I always say to people, when you see some of us where we are, you can think we have not achieved much. We just don't know where we started. Mm, just don't know. Some of us started at minus 50. 
So now you are looking at me and I'm at two. Don't I, I've not traveled two, two meters. No. I've traveled 52. And some of you were privileged. You started at zero. Now you're at five. You're comparing men saying, ah, this man has not gone very far. You don't know where I started with life. I was at minus 50. And I, look and I look and I realize, okay, I may be at two, but hey, I've come a long way, brother. I've come a long way with life. See? So it's important that you understand what is your source of value. When people look at you, and look at your life. What is it that they value about on you? You know the um, just uh, to, to 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 make you think. I'm not approving this, but just to give a crude example. Have you ever seen a scenario where a man can leave a very beautiful woman and go and uh, go and stay with another woman whom you even wonder, even the wife will say, ah. <laughs> are you sure? It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's like, uh, it's like one day my wife, my wife was talking to someone. There was a, in a, in a, in a, in a daughter's affair somewhere, somewhere. And uh, I think she was comparing the woman, you know, who caused that to happen. She says, ah, when I saw that woman, I'm not a <laughs> What was she trying to say? She's trying to say, if you really look in the natural, it's, it doesn't look like surely the man can leave this beautiful woman to go for this one. Like, which means what the man is after may not be the beauty. There's something in the person that is not, I'm not saying I prove that. No, no, that, that's not right. <laughs> okay? Or have you ever, have, have you not seen where someone can, be, can actually live a wife who is educated, having it all going well with a career, and they are going to take a house girl somewhere, someone who would have been a, a right? The person is not even educated or something. It means the value of a person cannot be on necessarily on achievements or on things. It goes far beyond that. Right? No matter your life, things may look like uh, whatever. There's something people come to you for. Hallelujah. There's something people appreciate about you. The problem is, if you keep focusing on the, on the black dot, you become so internally focused that the world will end up seeing you the way you see yourself. There's something. Hold your chest and say, there's something in my life that came from God. That means when you look at your life, your value is in understanding and maximizing your purpose. Now, okay, before I even delve into that, into that statement that I said, when you look at a person like Baba Guti, Um, 
I'm trying, to, I'm trying to also help someone here. When I use these examples, especially this one that I want to use now, I'm not underestimating education. I want to, I want to, I'm just illustrating something. You know I'm also educated. So when you go to Baba Guti, when you were going to Baba Guti, did you even care what qualifications he had? Did you even bother? Never. Which means his value was not in the education. There is something in his life that he had cultivated which was far bigger than education. Which means there are things that are far bigger than education, far bigger than money Hallelujah. that can be cultivated by a person in life which people can see value and seek after. Okay? As much as those those are important, they are also good. But I'm trying to say to you, there is more to life than sometimes what you think. Mother Teresa, nobody even knows how much, uh, uh, what she, uh, how, how in <coughs> what grade she went up to. Nobody knows. But what, what Mother Teresa did was to offer value to the world through compassion. By a heart of compassion, she touched India. By the heart of compassion, she touched the world. Do you know, she became so valuable. She was so authoritative. She was the only person in America who, while it's all Democrats, in one, in one meeting, all Democrats were there, all these Republicans were there, all, you know, this Hillary Clinton, you know, this, she was castigating and talking everything that was contrary to their policies. And everyone was going, why? Because only Mother Teresa can speak with that authority because of the moral authority she had gathered. Her value had nothing to do with the, the so-called, she had managed to touch human lives. And by touching human lives, she had become an icon. Mm. What are some of the areas of your life that people celebrate today? That possibly you are not celebrating yourself. I said number one, understand the value, understand the source of your what? Value. Value is about who you become in life more than your number two. Put your situation into proper perspective. Put your situation into a proper perspective. In other words, I'm saying develop a proper perspective on, li on life. When, we, when you look at your own problem, or that bad that wants to shout loud in your face. And you are thinking this is a very big problem, sometimes worth even contemplating to take your life or worth even quitting on life. Question is, it's a problem in relation to what? If comparing to what? I'll give you an example. There are people who when they sit and they tell you that Things are terrible at work. They can speak. You think this person is not earning anything there. You know. 
their main problem is I've not been promoted in the past two years. Maybe two, uh, it's even two months. I've not been promoted in the, the past year. They overlooked me for promotion. So even when they talk about that problem, it's like God has failed. They, uh, nothing is working in their life. Things are bad. Question. That's a problem, I agree. But in relation to what? Do you realize that that complaint about that promotion, if the boss were, is to call you into the office and make an announcement that unfortunately things have become so bad, we have to release you by next month. Do you know that that problem of the promotion becomes not a problem? <laughs> Automatically. <laughs> Automatically, that becomes not a problem. Now you, it was, now you have a real problem. That's why some people cannot have, God cannot bless them much. We, we say, let's find time to thank God and bless the name of the Lord. They say, for what? Because they are looking at the black dots. This all white cloth, they cannot look at it. Let's praise God for what, for what the Lord is doing in our lives. Doing what? You know, they are comparing because there is a sister who came last week and said, I thank God that, you know, I've been promoted twice this year. And they're saying, oh, no. Oh, no. It's a death by comparison. You know? So, oh, promotion is a problem. The lack of it is a problem. I agree. So, I, I want you to be promoted. I'll be praying. But as soon as you now know retrenchment is coming, the promotion issue is now no longer a problem. Why? Because... All problems must be in a proper perspective. That's why somebody said, I complained that I had no shoes until I met someone who had no feet. So, the inability to view problems in the relation in a relative light, I mean, is the reason for a lot of challenges for people. So, you need a proper perspective of your problem. You know, you can you can complain about your, your, your financial challenges until you have a health challenge. That's when you realize, oh, that one was actually not a problem. Because, okay, let's, start, let's, let, let's take it this way. So you're complaining about promotion because you're still, you still at the job, eh? And then when they say retrenchment, and now you lose, you lose you actually now just want to have a job. That's what you want now. You just, just now want to have a job. And then when you have left, a, when you have lost a job, the loss of a job is your major problem that you complain about. But if all of a sudden you are told you have got stage four cancer, the, pro, the, the job issue is no longer a problem. All of a sudden you are now worried about, can I live six more months now? Perspective to life. In other words, I'm saying some of your but is actually not even a problem. You need to celebrate God. And I, in, in simple terms, don't magnify problems and give them the status they don't have in your life. Number three, put failure into a proper perspective. 
put failure into a proper perspective. When dealing with failure, don't be quick to judge isolated situations in your life and label them as failures. Have a bigger picture in mind. Can I repeat that? When dealing with failure, don't be quick, too quick to judge isolated situations in your life and label them as failures. Have a bigger picture in mind. Failure isn't bad if it doesn't attack the heart. Anyone who will do great things in life will at some point fail. Now the fact that something you failed at something does not automatically make you a failure. If, listen to the words, you can fail at something, but that doesn't make you a failure. A failure means that's a new label. You have taken the label now. And you are labeling yourself a failure. Failing in one thing in life does not make you a failure. Does not make you because it means you have only have only failed one thing. It's not everything. It's not in everything. Number four, accept the unchangeable things of life and work around them. Accept the unchangeable things of life and work around them. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Common story. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. First part of his CV. He was a chief tax collector. Tax collector which means this guy, somewhere he was respected. No matter people hated them, tax collectors. But he was the, the chief among them. And he was what? Rich. Something is working. So he sought to see Jesus, but he could not because of the crowd. For he was of a short stature. There are certain things in life you can change. You can change your height. <laughs> you see, the problem with these things is there are things in life, I, I've just used a very fun example, but you know, there are things that are beyond things like height. There are things you must know. This I, can, I cannot change, but I can create a work around. Right? What did he do? Ah! He realized I can't change my stature, but I can make a plan. I can climb a tree and be able to see Jesus. And he climbed the tree. And Jesus saw him from the tree. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. You know. Do you know, especially, it's unfortunate they are not here today, a lot of our young girls suffer low self-esteem because of their skin texture. Because of their hair. You know. There are things in life you cannot make up on. Women are blessed. Because these days, 
They can make up on anything. In fact, I, I, anyone who marries a woman must be very careful to check whether whatever she, whatever is seeing is the person's things. Oh, yes. Because now, you think it's a hair, it will not be a hair. You think it's a teeth, it will not be a teeth. Oh, I even found they've got fake parts, you know. They, they, you, you, can, you can buy. Ah, you know. You can buy. <laughs> Ask the ladies. They are there. Things that you can buy that can enhance your, your behind. So you'll be seeing behind it. You think, hey, gifted. But ah! The day you, you, you go to the honeymoon and she starts taking off the, the wig. She starts taking off. Woo! And then she starts taking off even. Ah! <laughs> then you know you are, you are, you are in trouble. One woman said to my mom some years ago, you know, she said, ah, those days she was never wearing those tights, those things, you know. And she said, ah, you think these are our bodies? She said, said, no, we have things that rape things, you know. So yeah, these days they rape everything, such nicely packaged, but be careful. So it's, 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 it's a workaround. It's a workaround. Uh, it's a workaround. Saki has climbed a tree. Women can buy tights. Now, there are certain things you can't change about your life. You know, you can just create workarounds. It's a bad, but you know what? Find a way to deal with it. You know, find a way. Ah, the world is cruel. You are short like me, they say, ah. Short out and you become tall, they say, ah, Toro and a kupi. So you, there is nothing you can you <laughs> ah. No. Number five, stay hopeful and willing to do all you can to deal with your butt. Stay hopeful and be willing to do all you can to deal with your butt. Somebody said life is not fair, but God is good. You know, Naaman was a leper. One thing for sure, some of our bats, they have an expiry date. It may be looming large right now in your eyes, but not every bat can remain standing in your eyes. For, a, for Naaman, for Naaman, He kept his mind open because I have found in life there are people that actually even when a solution is provided they would have so given up they cannot take it up. The girl in his own house <laughs> that teaches you a lesson the answer to your problem may not be even far. It may be very close to you. Don't despise people. You never know who has got the answer to your butt. Because this was a slave girl. And she's looking at this master every day suffering. She goes to the mistress and says, Madam, this man is leprous. But if he were to go to Israel, if he was in Israel, 
this leprosy will be gone. Because there is a prophet there in Israel who can take care of this. And guess what? That tells you every problem has an expired debt if it meets the right anointing. That day, what I liked about Naaman is that when he heard this, he did not say, this girl must be joking. Does she know leprosy? It has no cure. He was not an Israelite. He had no, his only, that, that light glimmer of hope, he was willing to check on it. He said, ah, you said there is a prophet who can help me. She went to, he went to the king. He said, I need a letter. I need to go to Israel. Why are you going there? I heard there is a prophet in Israel. Who can help me? Unfortunately, the letter was addressed to the wrong place. It was addressed to the king. When the king saw, he saw it as an opportunity for a fight. And he tore his clothes. And Elisha heard about it. And said, why did you tear your clothes? Send him here so that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman went, nearly missed the opportunity because he was given a test of humility. He said, go and bathe seven times in the river Jordan. He said, ah! Are there no rivers in my where I'm coming from? They, they are there. But number one, they are not in Israel. Number two, you, they, you, you have no instruction to go to those rivers. We are here dealing with a revealed solution to your problem. Go and bath seven times. He went to bath, came out fresh, delivered. Be willing to do all it takes to deal with your part. You know, Jesus comes in Luke chapter 4 and he says, on verse 27, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. None of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. Wow. Even when where others have not been able to solve something, don't be willing to settle for the second best in life. There may be no testimony. Do you know that in life, my studies have shown me we are willing to develop faith where we already have a template of faith. But what about those people when they developed that template, there was nothing to look up to. When the woman with the issue of blood said, when I touch the hem of his garment, she had no reference point of anyone who had touched the hem of garment. And they, 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 that, that. Now everyone says, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Why? Because there was someone who was willing to go beyond the boundaries of believing God. All I'm saying to you, no matter what is looming in your life, there is a God who knows how to fix those problems. Stay in hope. Believing that this, this also shall come to pass. When you read every time in the Bible, it says, it came to pass. It came to pass. It came to pass. Every problem in life Yes, an expiry date. How, how can we be beaten by our ancestors? Who, with, despite no Bible, they observed life and came to one conclusion. Everything has an end. One day. What is no end? What is it? What is it? Translate for label. What does not finish is, 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 is a miracle. Ah! 
Number six, seek God. Seek God. We have read the story of Hannah. Hannah was loved, but she had no children. She said, I have cried enough. Now let me go to cry to God. A lot of situations in life bow in answer to prayer. A lot, I can tell you today. Some of the challenges that we are facing today, it's simply because we have not hit the right chord in prayer. When you, re when you hit the right chord, that thing will bow. It will bow. It will give way. Samuel means this one I ask it of God. There are certain challenges we may be facing today. There remain a challenge until we go to prayer. Number what? Number seven. Accept your label and live beyond it. <coughs> Accept your label and live beyond it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31. The story of Rahab. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Do you know that in life, there are certain labels that will never leave us, but we can outgrow them. The best revenge to give to your enemies is to make them see you live beyond their labels. It's the best revenge you can give to your enemies. You know, some of us, our surnames right now are not really what were our surnames. They became surnames because of people smoking. Do you know that there are people who are called uh, you know, because the family was very poor and people, the label was able to stick. Rab was once a prostitute. Guaranteed, yes. The Bible does not mean so there are certain labels that no matter how big you are going to become, they will say, a ah, very powerful elder, but, you know, but, now, some of those labels, there's nothing you can do about it, like Rahab. It's like David. David, when he took Bathsheba, the Bible still says, Uriah's wife, Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife. Now, that is a permanent what? Label. But here is something I can tell you. Rab was able to live bigger than the label prostitute. She not only saved the spies, but she became the mother, the grandmother of Jesus. Why? Because she, be, she, she, she is the one who, who brought the lineage of Jesse, you know, and Obed until David. Gen Matthew chapter 1, verse, you know, that genealogy, she's listed 
among the only few women who qualified to be listed in the genealogy of Jesus. Why? Because you can go and live beyond the label people are putting on you. How? The, the formula is given by faith. In other words, faith is a story changer. Faith is a great equalizer. Now, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, where you see Abraham, the great patriarch, where you see Enoch, the great patriarch, you now see Rahab in the same line. Why? How does Rahab qualify to be among Noah, to be among the great giants like Moses? Why does she fit in the chronicles of faith? Why? Faith. I can change my story. No matter how low life has beaten me, no matter my only mistakes in life, no matter I have done things that have made me look like I cannot change the label, I'm here to tell you, by faith, your story can change. Your story can change. It will be said differently at the end of your life. But, and you change it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number what? Eight. Believe that as long as you live, as long as you are alive, your end shall be better. Your end shall be better than your beginning, than your present. You know, when you read the story, we, we, I was talking to women here, teaching the book of Ruth, where a woman called Naomi, which means sweet, comes back from where she had gone, husband dead, children dead, and she's only coming back with a daughter-in-law. When, this is where the problem comes. She was so focused on how things had become so bad. Sometimes we beat ourselves too hard when the world is actually looking at us from another perspective. When the city saw Naomi coming, they said, whoa, is this Naomi? Is this Naomi? They were excited. They are not worried about what she has lost. They are excited because they, at least she has come back still intact. And yet, what does she say? She says, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Because the Lord has dealt with me a bitter blow. She's saying, Mara means bitter. She's saying, and she said, I went away full. I've come back empty. I want you to realize that in life, no matter what can go wrong, don't label yourself. Don't allow the situation you have gone through to give, you, to give yourself a label. Better the world label you, but not yourself. Yes. And the label she was giving herself was not even correct. She says, don't call me. The world is saying, you are still sweet, no matter what you have gone through. She says, no, I am Mara. I'm, I'm bitter. She's now giving herself a new identity. Don't allow challenges of life to give you a new identity. No. Say to neighbor, as long as I live, my story shall end well. Yes. Today we still say, Naman the leper, but did he, did he die a leper? No. Lastly, God uses imperfections and failures. God uses our imperfections and our failures. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 7 to 10. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 7 to 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, 
lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All oh, great people that God used, check their CVs. There was a bat. But they did not allow that bat to swallow them. Moses was a great man, learned in all manner, but he was a stammerer. Look at all the great men that you find in the word of God. There was always one thing that could have challenged them and destroyed them. David loved God with all his heart except in the, in the area of the wife of Uriah. One mistake that could have buried him, but he decided to rise above that part. I was finding, I don't, I don't know whether you, you read the Bible the same way I do. I went, in, I went to check in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm looking at these heroes of faith. I looked at Abraham. And the Bible says he never wavered in his faith. <laughs> and I'm thinking, but this is the guy who slept with the Haggai, with the Hagar. After the wife had said, me, you see, I'm old, I can't make it now. Just go in. And he, he, he succumbed. Problems were created. Which means at some point, he, wa he weakened in his faith. But you know what the Bible does? At the end of the day, God does not judge us for incidents. He gives a summary. A summary. Those who, those who fly, you know, with aeroplanes, they will tell you that a number of times that plane can actually be off course. It doesn't go straight like, like we think it's going straight. Uh, no. A number of times it can actually be almost of course and, and, and they navigate until. It's not about the, the meandering of the line. It's about did we leave the departure point? Did we arrive at the destination? And yes, we did. And therefore, I'm here to tell somebody in this place, no matter what I may, have, I may go through, no matter how difficult circumstances I may face, there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. That as long as the stump is in the ground, at the scent of water, no matter what you can go through, I want to say to you, from today, don't look at the cloth and focus on the black dot. Your life, the sum total of your life is not the mistakes you have made. The sum total of your life is not that black dot. There is so much working in some of your lives. If you can build on that, why is to work on what is not working? Why is to confront? In fact, do what I call a targeted approach. When we were growing up, our, my mother, we were so poor, we used to have very old pots. Sometimes it would have as many as three holes, one pot. So, it's a big pot like this. And you put water, there are three holes. That are but my mother would not throw away that pot. She would lift that pot with water, take milly meal, direct that milly meal on the first hole. You see, then the, you see, you see the water dropping to, to, 
to uh, close. And then she takes another pinch of milimi. She looks for the second hole. And that hole closes. And she looks for the third hole. And all the three holes at the end of the day are closed. Now she can put the pot on the, on the, on the fire to cook our, our meal. That's how you treat life. That the things that look like they are the porous holes causing you headaches, take a targeted approach, one at a time. Defeat that one, put it aside. Target the next one, defeat that one, put it aside. Target the next one, defeat that one, put it aside. At the end of the day, the pot shall be having no holes. Stand up on your feet. Did I help someone this morning? Yeah. I feel that sometimes it's not the fiery sermons that can change lives, but the life talks, life talks like these ones. Lord, prepare me to be essential, pure and holy, tried and true. Request me. Just take just some time to pray. Maybe somebody should thank God for those things that are still working in your life. For the first time, lift your eyes from what's not working. Find a reason to thank God. Let's lift our voices to God. Kora basande rebo shikata ya mande rebo ko shikata. Kori tala karebo shikata le mosante rebo shikata ya mando. Kore kala rabasata ya mando rebo ko shikata le mosite. Kori ndele rebo zakate katari ya mando rebo ko shikata. Kora bakasete rebo shikata ya mando rebo ko shikata. Kone karita kaya makatebo sita haya. Thank you, Lord. 
for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your greatness. We have every reason to thank you. We have every reason to worship you. We have every reason to glorify your name. Konta kada balaka se tere bo shikata. Korete li amando zoko to bo shakata ti amandere bekete. Thank you, Lord. Kori ba shente kadela li atahai. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You could be here today. You are not yet a child of God.